Welcome to Reshoot Amateurs in No Suits. Too many movies to explore. Ruthie, Hector, and Ed laugh until the end. Let's see something never done before. Jesus fucking Christ, this movie. Yeah, that was bad. That I, I think that's all we have to say for this. Bad. Everyone, have a g- welcome. In- it's not like. Bruh. I don't think it's bad. I just think it's kind Bruh. of lame. It's pretty to look at, but it's not a lot of like, not a lot of meat on them potatoes, you know. Yeah. Like a, a lot of the story stuff, kind of just oof. All right, should we should we say hi and who we are before we yeah. as we begin? Yeah. Hello. I am Luke Bezen's field writing career, also known as Hector. <laughs> I am Valerian, also known as Ruthie. Laura Lane. <laughs> Does that mean you're fucking my wife, dude? <laughs> yes, they were, uh, they about, were about to, to at the very end. Did nothing, yeah. So, Ed, do you want to give the... Do you want to just give the thing? Uh... The synopsis? The synopsis? The synopsis. Yeah, the synopsis. Agent Valerian, Major Valerian, and I think. What's her rank? Was it Sergeant? Sergeant? Yeah. Yeah. Major Valerian and Sergeant Laureline are two uh, government special agents, I think. Soldiers. And they. Uh, the movie starts off with them getting. A stolen little creature from uh, some gang boss looking thing in this other dimension. They what called like, this, hey, they uh, didn't, what's it the called? It's like this market. Yeah, it was the called, big market. It's called Big Market, but it's basically like the, the Mall of America, but on the fifth dimension. So you have to wear VR yeah. goggles to go to the big market. And stuff yeah, to interact. You can't interact with it unless, yeah, you have to wear glasses and gloves to interact with this other dimension uh, anyways they they are able to steal oh wait let me start over because the movie doesn't start off there <laughs> no, i totally forgot <laughs> <laughs> the movie starts off on this strange alien planet with this girl assumed girl wakes up and uh she has this little pet creature and she like well goes around and you see these pearls that these people seem to value a lot and uh these creatures can like eat it and poop out a whole bunch of them and then a whole bunch of shit starts falling from the sky causing big black clouds and like the spaceship hits and it's like the death star explosion going out from uh rogue one just like a huge explosion spreading out across the globe and then uh, they get into one of the spaceships that crashed. Some of these people and the girl you were carry, you were following did not get into the spaceship in time. And then she gets hit by the explosion. And then she like explodes in this like beam of blue light. And then it washes over Valerian. Valerian wakes up. Major Valerian, Sergeant Larley. They have this mission to go to the big market to steal that one creature. That well, one of those creatures that you see in the very beginning. Wasn't it implied um, to be hers? That was the implication I got. Yeah. No, the pearl was. Oh, oh the pearl was hers. She took yeah. one of the yeah. pearls. She did take one of the pearls. Right, right. Wait, yes. no, it was the prince that took the pearl. The prince took the pearls, yes. Because they, yes. yeah, he was like, yeah, that's the one I grabbed. And he had kept it with them. I thought, yeah, my assumption yes. was that the, the mule converter, the little creature, space hedgehog thing was her pet. I had the same thought, to be honest. I mean, you see her put it down on the little plant, and then, then the whole planet dies. Uh, either way, one of them survived. Only one, by the way. Apparently. It can just eat itself and poop out more. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Um, maybe it reproduces asexually. That would be cool. Anyways, um, big market. 
and then they steal the little one of the creatures and uh, he gets Valyrian takes one of the pearls uh, the, the, yeah one of the pearls um, and action scene and they get back on their spaceship and they fly off to uh, Alpha also known as the city of a thousand planets Woo. and in there they uh, are debriefed by the commander that there's like weird radiation in the center uh, and then, uh, oh yeah, they, they get, they go, they have this like convention or like this UN circle thing, and then they get attacked by the aliens you saw in the beginning, uh, and they, they all get like covered, none of them die, and then the commander gets taken hostage while they take, uh, I think they grab the pearl from Valerian. Yeah. Uh, no. no, they they have the pearl and the mule converted the whole time. No, they just try. No, no, no. no they don't no, have the mule just, converted. Valerian just tries to rescue the commander by doing this really weird chase. Well, when I say they, I mean Valerian and Laureline. Oh, they have oh the, yeah. okay, okay. The chase though, when he's like running through walls and like jumping and stuff, cool shit. Why did they it. use that? The it, rest it looked of the movie? cool. It's the same damn suit. It breaks. Um, <laughs> it breaks when they go through the... You're not like, hey, you know, let's bring two extras. For some reason. Just... Uh, sorry. Yeah, I know. Ooh. Yeah. Cool chase scene, and then he gets on his on the ship. They have a space chase with this ship that can, like, separate into a bunch. And he gets in this little... His little, like, bike spaceship. And that's another cool chase scene. And then he crashes inside the red zone, the radiation area. And then Laureline talks to these stupid, annoying fucking pigeons. I said there were space platypi. To get information. Space, space platypi. She I called know. them pigeons. <laughs> fucking annoying. I hate them. And it's just like, I don't know. It's like. What's his face gets lost. She has a side quest to find out where she is. She gets lost. He has a side quest to find out where she is. Yeah, except no, that's basically like, it. Except hers is like maybe like 10, 20 minutes of the runtime. His to rescue her took up a good third of the fucking movie. It was... Literally. That That's a bunch of the movie. Yeah. And Rihanna shows up and starts dancing for no fucking reason. It's like that that singer in Fifth Element. I hate that. It like completely ruins the like run of the movie. It's just like so out of place. You forget Ethan Hawke was also there. Yeah, but he... yeah, that's a joke. He doesn't. Do he anything. wasn't the. Yeah. he sadly wasn't the singer stripper. Yeah, he should have been the stripper. It was Rihanna. That, that's it. We fixed the movie. It was Rihanna. No, should have been a strip. Should, Ethan Hawke should have been a stripper. Fi- yep. We fixed the movie, guys. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, what happens after that? They get they find the plot that we already figured out like an hour in. <laughs> oh hour yeah, they, they they get to the center where there is no radiation, and they pass this weird portal, and they're inside this gigantic like cavern spaceship thing where all those uh aliens there they reveal that. The commander was in command in this war that they were fighting with some alien species. They don't elaborate on that. And when they shot down the like big mothership, that's what crashed down onto the planet and destroyed the planet and killed almost all of them there. That and the space nukes. Oh yeah, space nukes too. Yeah. You're able to strike. <laughs> Was it an orbital strike? I thought I it was, thought it was an orbital the... strike slash uh, crash. I thought it was so just the, the what... ship crashing that like cl- uh, glass the planet. So the, I, at least one hit the ship or hit the sh- ship. I didn't oh, say shit that time. the other two. And then two, there was three. So two of them hit the planet on accident. Okay. See, I thought it was an orbital strike too. No, he didn't really care. It was mostly just about the, the, okay. the ship, but then there was uh, collateral damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, collateral damage. A whole planet dies. Totally fine. Six, yeah. I, th- I think the population was kind of small because they said six million died. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty small. Yeah. Pretty small for a whole planet. But everything else that that was alive on that planet also died. Um, but the ones that did survive were on that spaceship were, yeah. And then their whole plan was just like, get this spaceship, feed it the pearls, because the pearls have like 10 megatons of energy, which is a lot for something very small. And to power this like weird, like, replication of their planet on the spaceship though only yeah it's like that movie titan ae where the, the with the planet building robot what i've never seen about? that one. Oh, it's so good um, uh, it's the same, shit, I, know, I need it's, to make you guys watch that movie it's the same dude who made uh anastasia yes he made a sci-fi film yeah it's a really good sci-fi film yeah anyways uh there's this very small thing where the Commander gets these AI robots to start shooting things. Uh, and then the spaceship gets out. Valyrian and Laureline are there. And then they get sent off on this escape pod, I guess. And then they have this talking little thing at the end. And then they fuck. Yeah. Oh, don't forget that he proposed to her in the very beginning of the movie. And he's like a really gross... Oh, yeah. And a lot of, a lot of, a lot of their talking is like, is that a yes? Yeah, he's like a gross sexist pig throughout the whole movie and he's like why won't she marry me <laughs> i use that voice specifically to annoy hector it's working <laughs> i mean yeah he is a bit a bit of a misogynist for wait a bit of a misogynist he has he has what he has a playlist that's what not how a playlist works of all the women that's more like with. a Bang. That's a, a place that's what like used to a, play music, not what you used to. Well, I think play, that that's the that's the point. Women. That's I know them trying to. It, it just turned into slang for your. It, uh, I guess it just feels like a "how do you do, fellow kids" moment. It really did. How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Can I go first? Please. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question, Ed. Did you know this is based off a comic book? Yes, I knew that. Do you know what was I running? Saw, I, I saw it in theaters when it came out. You poor bastard. <laughs> I guess. You liked it? It's not bad. It's not good. But it's not bad. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I Maybe I just don't like Luke Besson whenever he writes sci-fi. Because everything I've seen in that Fifth sci-fi Element. is just not good. Lucy. Fifth Element, this. You also wrote huh? Lucy. Lu- oh, right. He made Lucy. Lucy was okay. That's the only one I actually didn't stand. As but much. I, what I don't much. understand is he also did Leon the Professional, which is a really good movie. I think I think it's, again, just sci-fi I'm starting to notice, because he also did Taken. The so I think Taken it's just... or Taken the TV show? Yeah. Because he wrote no, the movie. movie TV show. Yes, there There's was. There's a TV show? Is. I don't know. But he wrote the TV show, not the movie. My question is, we know he wrote Fifth Element. He, we know he wrote Valerian. Did he write Leon the Professional? Did he yes. write Taken? Yes. yes. I okay. verified this last night. Okay. Are you sure he wrote yeah. Taken the, the movie? Yes. He wrote like... Because I did not... I, I, I looked at his thing, and I didn't see anything about Taken the movie. I saw Taken the show. Written by Luke Bezzett and Robert. It was written by him, yeah. Yeah, it was written oh, by shit. him. Oh, shit, it was. 2008, yep. So the reason I mention this is because do you guys know what the actual Valerian comic's about? I'm going to pretend like you didn't tell me last night. No, Hector, please tell us. It's about Valerian, who is a time traveler, time travel-like secret agent, oh. who goes all around time with Laureline, who is an 11th century... French girl who he helps and then she finds out and she's like, oh, I need, I want to come with you. And then he's like, okay. And then he trains her to be an agent for what is basically like gal- that's, it's not a city of a thousand planets. It's called alpha. That's all made up. It's just a piece of earth. It's just a city on earth called galaxy, which is the capital of earth. <laughs> and then no, no, it's actually really interesting. So the, remember how in the beginning they made a big deal about Valerian always being late. Mm hmm. He's always late in the comic book, which is hilarious because, again, time travel. 
Oh. <laughs> so then it ends up where he's a complete idiot. Well, it starts with him, like, Laureline being on the sidelines while Laureline does all the shit. But then, like, I guess there's a point where the author got bored. And he's like, because this went on from, like, the 60s till 2010. This is a long-standing comic Whoa. book. Yeah, so no, no, day. there's a huge, like, this inspired Star Wars, Star Trek, like, some parts of it, I think Star Trek. It inspired a lot of shit. So he uh, decided to turn off the violence and turn on the respect women juice? Yeah, so basically, like, at some point, Laura Lean becomes the main hero, and Valerian's just a fucking idiot. But <laughs> then they're like, oh, okay, we can't make Valerian too much of an idiot. This isn't fun either, so make him more sympathetic. So, like, the part where he's like, oh, he's always following the rules, and he's always, like, all this stuff, that's in the comic. Problem is, it just doesn't... I feel like Luke Besson just doesn't drink respect women juice at times, from what I've seen. And it's, yeah... So it's a whole really cool idea. So I try to keep some of that into this. Okay, so let me just go through the likes. The CGI is good. Like, actually pretty good. Like, it holds up decently well. I've seen a lot worse. Yeah. It's a... it's a. This movie has so much color. It's a pretty movie. <laughs> so it, much color and pretty visual. It was visual. a feast for the eyes, especially after Sucker Punch. I like some of the ideas they had. The market thing was original, and I like the idea, but I don't think it fit well with the movie, because then it's like, why don't they just keep stealing shit or going through dimensions to grab other shit like this feels like it could have been a whole plot itself and it, then it adds like why don't they just keep using this also the fashion in this movie is a lot better than fifth element i actually like a lot of the clothes they're wearing like it felt more like uh a rocky from jojo kind it of style it, okay now that you mention it yeah it looks more real yeah, yeah. like it yeah yeah also, Araki, if he ever makes a clothing line, I will try to buy it if I can afford it. Please. I need to keep watching um, JoJo. I don't know who you're talking about. Yes, you do. Yes, I huh? do? Yeah, you missed... You're, so far, you haven't seen my favorite JoJo. Nope. You stopped right at my favorite JoJo. Yep. All right, my dislikes. I'm sorry. <laughs> the two leads have no fucking chemistry. Also, what's her name? Cara Delevingne. How do you say it? Yeah, Cara Delevingne. Cara Delevingne. Cara Delevingne. I've only ever seen her do good in Paper Towns. I'm sure she's good in other shit, but everything I've seen her in has been awful. Her agent needs to get fucking fired. <laughs> like, Dane, Dahan, you're fucking better than this. Like, I swear to God. <laughs> fucking the, the, so, is, so is ethan hawk and he's in this movie ethan hawk has in a, he can do a sillier short cameo film in a bad in a bad movie and be fine he but like these two are people are young dane dehan just doesn't seem to be in like popular movies like the last big movie i saw him in was amazing spider-man 2 and we all know how that went uh incorrect oh big movie never mind big movie yeah also, my God, Luke Besson, I fucking hate how you tell people to act, okay? It's like you're just trying to, it's like he writes everyone and he tells them to act like they're pretending to be sentient people. Like the fact that John Goodman's alien sounded more natural and human than fucking Valerian and... Laureline. Okay, Valerian was the inspiration for Han Solo. Oh. That's what we were supposed to get. He was supposed he needs to be more like a scruffy looking nerf herder. He looks scruffy. He was acting <laughs> like a fucking nerf herder. <sighs> Sorry, uh Yeah, because he he is he is full of himself, like Han. Yeah. Honestly. But Sorry, sorry, I can't... No, he's full of himself like Han, yeah, but he just doesn't have the charisma. And he doesn't have, like, the cred... No. The, like, gravit... I, I don't know how to say it, like, the street cred? The gravitas he to pull the, it off? He, he doesn't does, have... There's the so, Motsi... I know, but, but, but the thing is that, like... The swagger? Han needs to have that kind of stuff because he's a criminal. Well, yeah, Valerian's that's... a cop. But that's the thing, like, the, the atmosphere of Han Solo, as soon as he came in, like, he's got, the, I guess, swagger is the right way to put it, because it's like, yeah, he's sm he's smarmy, he's full of himself, but, like, you kind of, like, there's, like, yeah, I, I like that. When Valerian, when Dane DeHaan did that with Valerian, it's like, God, when can he get punched in the face? <laughs> Yeah, like I'm wondering if the I'm wondering if Luke was actually getting the because again I did a very loose like research on this because again there was a point where Valerian was a complete idiot, 
But the problem is the plot doesn't make him seem like an the the story doesn't imply that he's an idiot. It's just his actions show that he is. But everyone else acts like he's not an idiot. He's just a hothead. So I don't know. It's just ugh. What else did I say? Uh, Valerian not knowing the honeymoon is after the wedding is just such a bad joke. That <laughs> stuck out to me. I also, did not do that. also, we find out the commander is evil like a scene after we see him. He's like, oh, I don't want protection. Mm, I'm angry. And then he's like, and then he goes into a room. Hey, are you done torturing this guy yet? Like, what, what the <laughs> fuck? Not to mention he's wearing like a, what was, the Stalin hat. And he's got like a really. <laughs> he puts on the Stalin hat before going to interrogate someone. It's gold. Like, okay, I get it. It can be fun. It can be fun. But it's just like, there's no funniness to it. Like, I don't know. Maybe I didn't miss it, but like, I maybe missed it, but like, yeah, you... oh, this movie takes itself so seriously. I don't know if it's supposed to be a joke or not, because it would have been hilarious if yeah, you so. Yeah, take that one song from The Lorax. Uh, just like as he's walking down menacingly, just how bad can I be? Oh, that's the song, yeah. Also, why is it a human federation in Alpha? Why not just a federation of... Yeah, why is it called the human federation? Because it's not all humans. Yep, I didn't like that either. <laughs> Again, I think that was something that was from the original comic that just didn't translate well, since Alpha is a completely made-up thing. As far as I can tell, it wasn't in the comic, which is fine. I get it. It's, a f- six, it's like a fucking ancient... And not in a bad way, but it's ancient. Like, you can definitely play around. There's more than 50 years. Also, Valerian and Bubble have so much better chemistry than Valerian and Laureline. It's depressing. <laughs> Bubble's the shapeshifter. Yeah. Bubble is Rihanna good. the shapeshifter. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. So, changes. Yes. We're telling the audience. I know. I'm just, I was just thinking about the chemistry. Okay, so yeah, here's the changes. Good. I'll be honest, I didn't do a good job writing this because for some reason, Luke Bezin's movies just seem to short circuit. <laughs> sci fi films seem to short circuit <laughs> me in a way that I cannot recover from. So when we're mad at Hector, Ed, we pick Lucy. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't hate Lucy, is the worst part. It's fucking stupid that she turns into a USB at the end, but like, I get it. <laughs> wait what you've never seen lucy <laughs> no oh whoops she's a usb she turns into a usb at the end when she reaches 100 yes. percent brain power brain activity mm-hmm. holy shit that's hilarious <laughs> okay okay so here's the changes they're bounty hunters instead of federal agents um, this is, feels like it could be a good cowboy bebop kind of thing all right also, later on the comic, after the whole Galaxity thing gets lost in a temporal paradox. So, they're just freelancers for a while, for the rest of it. Right? No alternate dimension stuff. It's cool, it doesn't make sense why it's not used later. Like, it could be used to keep stealing stuff and getting around. Like, they could have just grabbed... Found a way to get, uh... Laureline to rescue her. They could have just used, like, a another galaxy th- like another fifth dimension thing to steal her it didn't make sense so i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna bring that up okay here it is another change the commander's a pretty well loved man around the alpha the second in command i don't know why i don't know his name i don't care he's not well loved he's just kind of seen as the asshole so everyone stays from the radiation zone except for a few people who are rumored that they might be immune. So people tend to stay away from them. No one knows what they really look like. They tend to wear like a special helmet around them, right? I I don't know what's a cool design. Like like um Daft Punk helmets? Just, yeah. At least just the, yeah. The, the one that has it. Yeah, the visors. Yeah, yeah, they have the visors. Yeah, Daft Punk helmets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what was it John Luke? What was it John Luke was the name of the guy who had the, has the front the whole um, glass visor thing? The whole glass one that could modify more easily was it? John, was it John? I don't know who it was. I'm a huge Daft Punk, Punk, little Daft Punk fan. I can't fucking remember their names. Thank you, Ruthie, for looking this up. You want that one? Yes, I want the one with the. I want the more golden the, one. But who is the, who is the it? one with the one that looks more like an astronaut helmet? Yes. I'm just. I'm telling the audience. Yeah. Also, now I'm reminded that Daft Punk broke up. Thank you. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Uh, one is Thomas, uh, Thomas, he's the French, Van Altier, and Gat 
Guy Manuel de Homem Cristo. I think Tomas is the. I think Tomas is the silver one. I'm going to say I want to look at Guy Manuel, the uh, gold one with that mostly. They can emote through their faces, you know, through the mask. Okay. They do emoticons on their faces. Yeah. So people act like they're a gang. They kind of tend to stay away from them, right? So the dream flashback thing of the past with the pearls still happens. Also, that was the best part of the movie. Like, the part where, there were like, uh, David Bowie's playing and all the alpha is there and then alpha's being made and then them. Yeah, it's a great world building. I don't know what it is about. Again, it's like Fifth Element. The beginning's so good and the rest of the movie just can't compare. What, Luke, Luke Besson should just, like, make uh, tabletop... Or like world build, he's just he's just do world building. He's really good at world. No, building. he's not bad at world building. He's, he's really good, good at world building, and he's the thing also is that he he doesn't even use that much no. exposition yeah. like, for it. He does all, a great job. Building. Okay, so the dream flashback still happens. Lorne, Lean, and Valerian are bounty hunting. They get the converter. And then when they see the pearls, Valerian runs. Laureline wants to talk, but Valerian, being the strong meathead, just kind of grabs her and just kind of takes her away without her wanting, wanting to talk, you know? So they go on the ship, and they decide to keep the converter as a pet since they can't find anything on their databases. She's not happy with him because she was trying to talk, and he just doesn't trust her. And she acts pissed off. She goes to the fake beach, right? We're going to cut to a montage of them going on a few missions, showing moments of them trying to evade also federal agents. And they don't realize, like, while wow, we're getting a more uptake on federal agents, it's because they, they're trying to find the converter. Um, show some moments of different planets and cities, you know, like, maybe they set, save a girl from a pond, like, they save, like, a girl, and they save her and her pet jellyfish, right? Like... They're sort of like their wacky mishaps, right? Um, maybe what hijinks shenanigans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing. Uh, there's a scene where she's like, because in the comic, Laureline is known to like use her feminine nature to like mess with guys and then take their shit or like to get what she wants. So like, what's her face from Cowboy Bebop? Yeah, like Faye from Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, she just like will flirt with guys, and then she'll take the shit. I would not be surprised if Cowboy Bebop... The, the woman's weapon, as it's called in Game yes, of Yes, I don't think it's... Yeah. <laughs> so maybe she's, like, about to grab a guy, like, she's about to kiss a guy, and then she takes it out of his pocket, and then as he realizes what he's doing, he, like, she, like, tases him. And then he just knocks him out. Uh, she leaves for kiss, maybe grabs it, takes him out, and then Valerian's just watching in disgust, because they both have, like, cameras... That the other can see through, in a sense, just to, as partners. Uh, Laureline's almost always with the converter. She's always petting it through these adventures, just showing that, like, they're, they're getting closer to it. Finally, they're caught by federal agents and they're held inside. Laureline hit the converter with that cloaking tech that he used, that uh, Valerian used to hide the knife. Or the gun? The gun. The gun. The gun. Uh... Maybe she's hiding the converter in her boots. Uh, the second command's interrogating them. The commander is like, let them go. He's super friendly. He's like, they don't know anything. Stop being rude. The explosion happens. The pearls kidnap the wrong people. Because they think they have the converter. Valerian wanted to be a hero and also get a reward. Maybe instead of just like punching through buildings, as cool as it was, it makes it like, why don't we use this more? He grabs like some experimental boots they're working on as he's chasing after them. Puts them on quickly. And then he's just jumping around, trying to catch the airship. I mean... Or spaceship. I don't know. What? Got, the, both of you have mentioned, why don't they use this more often? I'll tell you why. Where is Alpha located? Space. What do... What do... What's not in space? What? Air. What do people... What do most things need? A good chunk of things. Yeah, but he also has the space suit, so he can just run through the entire thing. He can run through it. But that's a lot of but damage about, to the city. What about the yeah? What about the time that he like punched through a wall into a radioactive the water thing? Yeah, radioactive. What? It there was a radioactive sign right before he punched the wall. 
cool, even better. Yeah, no, he's yeah, no. The reason he's an they, idiot. I, <laughs> the reason that the, not everybody does it is because it's causing a lot of damage, and there's a lot of different biomes. Yeah, there's different biomes, and I, I just thought it was really funny how he punched through a wall while running, and then it's the water thing. Okay, what about everything over there? Like it's just gonna get flooded. Unless they have things, that I, things like I assume closer. there's like a thing that closes. Yeah. It's the future. Anyway, I just Sorry. thought the special boots just because like I want to see if we can get a different kind of action. So and also like maybe he's like bouncing around. Like uh, if anyone's seen My Hero, when Deku can start jumping on walls and running around, using all for one or one for, one yeah. for all. When he's one for all, just like that. I don't know. Lor- Lorleen has her cam up. And she puts on the screen. Uh, oh, Valerian get like gets on the ship and he starts trying to kick ass. I kind of like the me head thing. He's too fast, so he can't like get a good hit. And they're like, they're not fighting, but they're also like really good at just kind of dodging out of the way. And uh, she notices that like, hey, while Valerian's fighting, they aren't hurting him or anyone, and they're actually healing the hostages that accidentally got injured while they were being kidnapped she mentions this you know second command's like hmm commander's like they're just some bullshit excuse i can't think of anything uh before the camera cuts off the pearls throw valerian off he's like all right i'm gonna get back into it and he runs and does like a big jump but he fucking overshoots it (laughs) and then he just like falls and that's when it cuts off and she's like God Lori starts freaking out, and the commander's like, "Oh, don't worry about it. Here, we'll help you. Uh, I we're getting your ship back out of the lot. We g- I'm gave it a special uh like extra engine or something. It'll be able to go faster. You can get around faster throughout the city, or maybe it's like you have a special little bike to get around. Maybe it's like a, I don't know. Skyjet. The Skyjet. Yes, we give you a Skyjet. It's secretly a tracker." <laughs> So she goes to the one of the friends, the one who maybe the brain jellyfish. Remember, I said she res- they rescued a girl and her brain jellyfish. She's like, "I need your jellyfish." Okay, don't overdo it, because I like the scene of her like willing to risk it all to save him. Yeah, even though he doesn't, you know, it's a good show. Don't tell, but then they keep telling you like, "Oh, but you do care about me because you're doing all this." I'm like, "You ruined it. You fucking <laughs> ruined it." So she's like, so she's like, okay, thank you. And then maybe as the girl's talking to the jellyfish, as you know, as, as she leaves to go find her to find Valerian, the girl's like, does she realize that this on, this only works with romantic like people you're romantically interested in, or whatever? <laughs> so then she finds Valerian, nearly kisses him, but doesn't. They keep going through some like wacky misadventures to find it. Then they learn the truth. I I think the ending's still the same. I'm just cutting down the stupid subplots of like, like you said, the fetch quest. By that point, they already figured everything out. And I think by this point, they talk to the pearls and then they get the full story. And that's the end. I don't know. I just cut through some shit. I don't know. Yeah, it is. It is a fairly long movie. It didn't have to be that long. Yeah. I feel like they give him a budget and he's like, oh, I have to spend all of it. I don't know. Okay. Because mine's short. Because this this movie lands in the really strange location where, like, I really don't have that many problems with it, but I also don't like much of it at all. It's just kind of like... Meh? There. Huh. Yeah, it's just very meh, but, like, I don't know, like, because my likes, I like the action, and it's pretty. That's it. That's it. What I didn't... What I didn't like was uh, basically the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Same. What a mood. But it, it, I don't know because it, it, it feels weird because like it's like the rest of the movie is bad, but like I like just this stuff. But it kind of balances out for me for some reason. The good is kind of a man. The really good outweighs the really bad. I guess I don't really know. Bad. Yeah, but like I don't know because the plot. Yeah, it's kind of dumb uh, for the most part. Especially the, the whole commander thing. Uh, people say they have no chemistry. I also kind of agree to an extent. 
there, there's like a few things that I'm that I could have believed if it all worked. Like they they have a couple hits, just but it's not like a solid hit, you know. Yeah. You get what I mean? I mean, it's like just barely, like almost. Also, I'll believable. be honest. I thought they were already sleeping with each other, considering how she was like on top Same. of him. In yeah, the yeah, beach. yeah, yeah. That's 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 how I remembered the movie. Is the thing. I'm like, oh yeah, they're together, right? No. But they're already on top of each other in such keep, a weird way. They keep like kissing each other, like on face. Yeah. Cause, cause, yeah, because, I mean, Valerian says, like, you're attracted to me. Like, they're both attracted you, to each other. Ruthie, it's just that Valerian's a fucking baby. <laughs> Ruthie, you don't ever, like, just, like, pounce on the homies and give them kisses on the face? I kiss the homies goodnight. You know that. Speech. Yeah, we Speech. don't ever, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, I think they're, they're, they both like each other. It's just that Valerian's kind of a, a teenager and very immature with his, you know, his... Hall of Fame or whatever you want to call it. His playlist. I, I knew a guy who had that. Serious? I knew a guy who had like a notebook with the names of everybody. That's yeah. so cringy. I know. There's it's okay, fucking, okay. I don't know which would make it worse. If the notebook's not very <laughs> big or if the notebook's massive. I don't know. Like No, the the existence of a notebook. I mean, I never I never saw it. I never saw it. He just said he did, and he said he there were like a thousand girls in there, or more than That's, a thousand. And I'm like, the fact that he just was this told in middle school. Was this didn't in even middle school? See it. That makes it so much worse. No, it was it was in work. It was in oh, work. Oh god! But it's the even thing worse. is, like, he said a thousand. He said a thousand, which makes me think he doesn't know how big that number is. And he was like twenty four, and I was like twenty six at the time. I'm like, bro. No. <laughs> okay, the fact that he told you that there is a notebook tells me that the notebook has maybe maybe one name and it's righty. Maybe I'm mean. Maybe a little bit of lefty. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's an actually death note? I don't know. Or a fuck note? <laughs> uh, he just writes the name and then that woman goes and finds them. Yeah. <laughs> fuck him. Um... <laughs> No, but he was he was super young, and he said like a thousand. I'm like, no. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, that was super misogynistic. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> yeah. t- 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 that whole thing. <laughs> so bad. Pro tip to our audience: don't do th- yeah. any of that. All of that bad. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of bad that they made him such a, like. They're trying to make him like a cool dude. Yeah, like you can't play it both ways. You have to make him either a big asshole yeah. or not, or a cool guy. But you can't. It's really hard to do both, and they didn't right get that right balance. Yeah. I mean, you you can do both. Just write them like a real human being. That's all. <laughs> Everyone has flaws, but that's kind of like if you're if you're keeping a list, you're kind of just a bad person in general. So. Yeah. <laughs> That or it's like fucking memento and you just keep forgetting. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that a part? Is that a thing in the comic books where he brags about his memory, but he never like actually reads? The no, stuff? he's no. In the they mentioned this in the comic, he is devoted to Laureleen, but sometimes he like gets. It's implied that either he crushes on other women or he sleeps with them, but it didn't give me quite quite the right answer. No, I'm talking about the memory thing that they talk about. What memory thing? Because at the beginning of the movie, that Valerian like, brags about his perfect memory score, but he just forgets everything. I well, don't, or he doesn't even read it in the first. Yeah, place. It doesn't read it oh, in the first place. I don't know. That wasn't a thing in the. I read the Wikipedia on it. I didn't do like much research. I used the bare minimum for this one. But yeah, I, I thought the memory thing was kind of funny, but every other joke did not land at all. Yeah, the memory thing was like, oh, interesting character quirk. The 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 list, gross. Everything else yeah. from after that. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 a weird movie. Uh, but yeah, just very basic. I didn't like the plot. I didn't like it, the characters very much. I liked uh the equivalent of Aziz, I guess, uh Zeke or whatever they called him. The 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 guy who deactivated the bomb at the end. Right. 
Oh, right. He's, he's yeah. like a non-character. <laughs> Almost. He's a named non-character. <laughs> Zeke! <laughs> tablet! Zeke, hurry. Uh, Aziz, yeah. hurry. <laughs> yeah. Aziz, bomb! Yeah. Uh, the general was also okay, I guess. And Delirian and Laureline were good in parts, in my opinion, when they were by themselves. <laughs> yeah, as soon as we're, they were together, it felt like a negative current. <laughs> yeah. The the vibes went sour. Yeah. What would you fix? What would I fix? I'll just give you and how? how the movie should be, which it should be okay. just Valyrian in the city solving crime and not not like i don't think you need to have even like the main plot of like the commander and all of that so you just want the batman in space basically but uh he just he wants judge dread i guess i don't know i just want valyrian with more action scenes in the in alpha just like running through stuff and like stuff like that and I guess maybe along the way he meets Laureline and then you can have some act like yeah like maybe he's a merc maybe he's a cop in my version I like the merc idea though mercenary maybe he's yeah because you know Han Solo and he can be like a little bit more like Han Solo all like hey you know like swag drip all that <laughs> a little more nerf yeah. a little, little bit more just like Chariz- charismatic but yeah he just like gets he has no allegiances no commitment see where i'm getting at only to me and my list <laughs> and then i'd say like early on in the movie he meets laureline who maybe she's another merc maybe she's just a cop or something or can she be a time traveling eleventh century French sure. woman who is also a cop? I do like the I do like the cop not a cop dichotomy. Sometimes. Yeah, cop like, not a cop. You don't like the cop buddy films? Yeah, yeah. Well, like especially like when there's a romance oh. brewing, like I don't know. There's something like yeah. For, it's like Romeo and Juliet, but a, a little, okay, okay, well, a little. Yeah. no, but not either, either criminal. way. He meets Laureline, and maybe she's a cop, maybe she's not, but they need to work together to do the big plot, whatever it is. I don't know. And while working together, that's when Valyrian kind of like falls for her, actually likes her. But while they're working together, Laureline sees all these things that he does that she doesn't like. Cause you know, he's probably, he's still like, let's say he still has his playlist and she just kind of finds it while like digging through his ship and stuff. And then, you know, maybe there's some actual character development for Valyrian where he tries to be a better person for Laureline. There you go. Hmm. <laughs> like, maybe maybe he actually, like, he actually just, like, deletes the fucking playlist because he never did that in the movie. <laughs> no. Nope. Wasn't their ship completely destroyed? Though? No, the ship was not destroyed. No, the ship... No, uh, his the skyjet was destroyed. He wrecked that. Right, but right. The ship, right. which they, what, it's got a name, Alex, I think, or yeah, yeah. No, that's the name of their AI. Yeah, yeah, the ship, them. Alex. He's still. They're still good. Uh, but yeah, I I like I would like that more more so, and yeah, like the character development for Valyrian is like. She he notices that like he's trying to be all cool and all. But she's not falling for it. And she he like eventually figures out I was like, oh, I'm an asshole. And he just like deletes the playlist and actually like communicates with her of like, hey, I'm trying to be better kind of stuff. I really like you, kind of things. You know. Yeah. Does he tell her that he deleted the ass that the the playlist, or does she find out that he deleted it without her prompting? communication? He tells oh, her that second one's a lot better. He tells her and shows her. Or like he does it, like he, he, does he do it in front of her, or is it like I delete it and then she's like, "Well, where's your where's your stupid playlist?" No, he's like, he oh, does not delete it. it in front of her. He deletes it by himself. Later on, he's just like, "Fuck it." 
because I yeah I want I want I want it to have a little bit more of positive rep- representation of what a healthy relationship looks like, which is communication. That's what I was trying to go for. And where you don't need them to be there to be a better person and to fix yourself, fix or like be a better person. Yeah, I like it. That's yeah. good. So he deletes it by himself, and then he goes up and communicates it with her. He's like, "Hey, look, it's gone." Because I want only you to be there. He can still be a little, little bit of a, you know, swagger. Just like I want you to be my playlist, (laughs) just you. Or he's like, here, check out my new play playlist. Oh shit! Gross. No, no, no. I just put, I just put your name. Oh yeah, yeah. He can go up to her after he deletes and just puts her picture on it. It's like, you sure you don't want to see my new playlist? And she's like, no, I don't. And he turns it on either way, and it's just her picture. It's like that's it. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, but yeah, I just want yeah. him to be able to communicate that he's trying to be a better person and actually show up for it and all of that. And while they're solving a big crime, I don't know. Had the John Goodman be the bad guy, the John Goodman character, but in in like in John Alpha, Badman. in Alpha. <laughs> what? Why is that so funny to you? <laughs> I wasn't expecting. <laughs> said, so Do you hear no. what I said? It or no? I was talking. You, you're like, you were just like, sorry. You're just like John Goodman should be a bad guy. And I'm like John. Badman. <laughs> John Badman. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, just have that guy just be actually not not in the different dimension, but like in Alpha, like as a crime syndicate boss in the center, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The radiation wasn't of physical, it was of emotional. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. yeah. I don't know, maybe that or maybe they just have kind of the same thing and instead of arresting the commander really and can just shoot him since he's a merc. <laughs> it's like you 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 genocided? That's even I draw the line there. Bang. <laughs> yeah. But well, that's that's what I want. More of a interpersonal kind of stuff than things, but since he's a merc and he's solving crime in Alpha, a whole bunch of that cool shit, you know, running through walls and shit. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. that sounds really cool. Actually, really. No, the, the the running through the walls makes more sense if you're a merc, you're, although you're probably gonna have a lot less uh, you're protection gonna... from the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a merc, like working for the syndicates in there. Sometimes, sometimes the the you know the enforcers hire him because he's you know a badass. Yeah. <laughs> Literally me. <laughs> no, uh. Also, Hector earlier today, Boomer, it's your dinner song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so foreshadow. Well, I guess not foreshadowing. Uh. Just a little sneak peek. I can't believe we all did like mercenary bounty hunters in our fixes. Like I knew Hector was going to do it. And I knew I was going to do it, but I wasn't expecting it from Ed. And now we're all doing it. I mean, it. it just fits better, honestly. It really does. They don't give off cop vibes or soldier vibes. Nope. No. Mm-mm. Anyways, likes. This is going to be really long. CGI was good pretty straightforward uh i thought the premise was really interesting i know hector shared about the uh graphic novel and i know it's original uh originally it's the graphic novel and the city has nothing to do with that i didn't hate it though like normally i don't like it when they kind of deviate but this felt like it felt really good like i i think i said it on air if not uh luke benson just really good at world building he should do a lot more world building stuff i hope he does just not without the plots that he writes or the characters. Yeah. He can build yeah, he a can, world. He can, he can build NPCs. He can write the script for the world building part, and then somebody else writes the plot around it. <laughs> yes. This is literally what they did with Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's what need, they did with Elden Ring? Elden Ring with Luke Benson. Miyazaki yeah. wrote the lore and like the backstory, and then uh, not Miyazaki, yeah, no, Martin. sorry, uh, George, George R. R. Martin wrote that. And then Miyazaki pushed the game like 500 years from that point or so. Mm-hmm. 
and then just wrote the rest of it. I think George R. R. Martin was like, what did you do to my characters? <laughs> Supposedly. Come up and- <laughs> He's like, I made them Dark Souls. Dark Souls. My babies. What? So, what did you do so to my babies? George, yeah. What so, you did to mine in the fifth season? So R. R. Martin wrote like the world for Elden Ring. Yeah. Yes, he wrote the world. He actually knew what Dark Souls was. He already knew about it beforehand, so he's able to kind of yeah. make it easier for them. But he wrote the general idea. He wrote a lot of the lore. So like all the God family drama in Elden Ring. That's Martin. Mm. So, so I'm assuming the, the, the lady with the Scarlet Rot, the optional boss, yeah. uh, was like his character? Probably. I think so, but I think he didn't expect... Yeah, because yes. she has... Yes, she I, has he came up she with has all like the big... Some, like, cool lore about her, about like being a servant for someone. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. she's the coolest. She's really cool. She's cool. Speaking of which, I, I beat Elden Ring, yes, everyone. I know. But I waited a week. I'm so c- I don't have to... Well, you the title <laughs> that you. I didn't talk to you for a week, so I didn't I, have to do that. I yeah, I told Ed to call me Elden. I asked Ed if he could call me Elden Lord. He's like, I'm going to talk to you for a week. Yeah, now he's like, call me thing. Ellen Lord for the next week, and I'm like, all right. Just didn't talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, sorry, Ruthie. The fashion, as Hector said, it was a lot better in this movie. On to my dislikes. <laughs> This th- this is the first bullet that I wrote, word for word. The dialogue is better on the alien planet than between the two leads. Oh yeah, when you can barely understand when what they're, they're saying. When there's the subtitles, language, because yeah. in, in, in the language of the pearls, yeah, it's way better. Oh shit, I totally forgot. Can I, can I insert something really quick? Really quick? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. I like it when people give aliens like alien things to do like the the aliens the main aliens they they like get black and stuff when they're sad and stuff you know yeah but like why do they still like i i like it when things when alien things actually look alien and maybe they should look more alien and that's just how they emote you know because they still have faces to like be sad but like maybe they don't they can't move their faces too much and that's how they emote they're fucking bioluminescent turns black and stuff yeah yeah i don't know yeah. i just like alien things looking alien that's all yeah no i 100 agree i was right. a little disappointed with some of the alien stuff looking more and like humans my biggest gripe is avatar because if you yeah. look like the, the the other creatures in that planet they have breathing holes on their shoulders and they don't have like teeth they have like beaks so you know what you know you leave what? You leave Ang and Katara. You leave Ang and Katara no, out of this. The movie. <laughs> uh, Space Pocahontas. Oh, they're no, about to show uh, too. I know, but like the thing is, if if you look at our planet, things are pretty similar between all the all the life. So in Avatar the movie with the blue aliens, they should have breathing holes on their shoulders and beaks. No, I hundred percent agree. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, I, I just liked the, the dialogue between Kara and Dane was just so, or Valerian and Laurelane. It just felt uncanny at certain parts. Like, this is not how people talk to each other. It was just kind of awkward, especially at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I was disappointed to find out that Valerian was played by Kara. Cause in all you mean of them, not Kara, uh, Dane. Or, yeah, I, th- I thought Val- Valerian was played by Kara. Through the through through the entire like all the promotional material, just the way that it was presented, because it'd be Valerian in the Thousand Cities, and you'd see Kara's face, and she was kind of in the place where I'd assume Lead was. So I was kind of surprised that Dane DeHaan was playing Valerian, and I was kind of disappointed because I don't like Valerian as a character. Hmm. I had a lot of assumptions about this movie, and I wish they were right because. <laughs> Why is this couple, question mark, co- the <laughs> most competent soldiers in the Federation? Because it seems like they're the most competent. And if so, how the fuck has this city survived as long as it has? I mean, I don't question it. 
with how real world stuff works? I don't know. I don't know. They just they they did not have it together. They might just be the most uh not competent, but uh they they had the best results. <laughs> the best sheer dumb luck. Yeah. Uh, Ed, you made this point earlier. Well, you and I made this point. Uh, it's called the Human Federation, but there's so many non-humans, it, it shouldn't be a human federation. That seems a little racist to me. Why not the Space Alpha racist. Federation? I actually like that a lot better. Valerian is super sexist, and the film, like, sometimes, like, sometimes it kind of just rewards him for it, or, like, rewards him for being, uh... I guess, assertive and, like, charging the plot forward, but it seems to punish Loreline for the exact same reason. For being sexist? No, not for being sexist, but when she is trying to advance the plot, when she is trying to exert, like... Holy shit. When she's trying to do something. That, you're right. It punishes super, her for that's it. That's super correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, I really disliked that. Uh, Fifth Element kind of did the same thing with the two leads of that movie. And I thought, you know, maybe Luke would learn. No, no, no. I thought he learned the beginning and then no. Um... Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I got a feeling because as soon as she comes in with the drink and he immediately starts stealing it. And then like, yeah, dude, let her have the drink. Fuck it. Get, get it yourself or ask her to get you one. Come on, man. And it's her birthday? And you didn't know? Right, the whole movie happens in the span of like a day. Yeah! My last one, my last dislike, the ma- at least that I cared to write down, uh, the Bullon Banthor third of the movie. The what? The, the aliens. Which aliens? The aliens that kidnapped Floraline, the Fisher people. Oh, those. And then the one tried to eat her brain. They're called Bullon Bathors. Oh, the space hillbillies. Gotcha. Yeah, why are they allowed in the city? Explain. The They are known for being hostile. Xenophobic. Not letting you into the... Ter- xenophobic, not letting you into their territory. Why are they allowed in the city? The city seems to be... Like, in the opening montage with uh, Space Oddity, the implication is... Friendly races get to stay in Alpha, but these people try and eat the brains of inv- of people that they kidnap, which I think is heavily frowned upon. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I don't like it when people try and eat my brain. It would be better if they were a gang. It really would have been. Also, like, like, not even just, like, looking past the world building arc, what does it do for the plot? It makes them have to be less selfish, but even... But even then, you can find a way to make it a little bit more plot related because it feels like you it's know just what it, shoehorned You know what it does to the plot? It gets Nick Besson to put Rihanna dancing just like the singing lady in Fifth Element that makes no fucking sense. <laughs> it gets him to add that onto it. But I found a way to switch it up, so let's get Thank to you. it. <laughs> uh, fixes. Hector mentioned uh, he had heard before we'd seen this movie. The leads would actually work better if they were not a couple. So let's do that. They're siblings now. Can we still keep the kissing scenes? Or... I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Just on the cheek. I see you have been watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Uh. <laughs> also, they're not feds. Once again, they're bounty hunters. We're going cowboy bebop in this. Yeah. Uh, their family owns a bounty hunter business. Each like member of the family owns their own ship. Uh, you can even say that they're descendants of the original, uh, Valerian and Loreline if you want to keep, like, if you want to have a nod to the graphic novel. You don't have to. I'm just suggesting. No, that, that actually, that actually like that. is really cute. Is the movie still yeah, titled Valerian? Um, yes. Okay. Is the main character still yeah, titled Valerian? He's, he's, yes, that, that's what I mean. Like, they're, like, he's Valerian Jr. She's Loreline Jr. Oh. I thought you said descendants. You know what I mean? Far away. Yeah, they're descendants of 
Yeah, well, yeah. I, I don't mean Junior like their mom oh, and dad. Because okay. that would be weird if they just yeah. like did that one-to-one. But like <laughs> in their family tree, you can see Valerian and Loreline. And they go way down the tree. Yes, and then... there, there they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, the way that the family works is one family member gets one ship uh, when they're old enough and mature enough where they can kind of do stuff by themselves. Valerian and Loreline have not fully proven themselves to be reliable enough bounty hunters, so their mom put them in the get along <laughs> ship. <laughs> <laughs> they have to work together and actually like get a job done without maximal damage. And then they can get their own ship and stay the fuck away from each other. <laughs> That's actually really good. Yeah. Uh, Valerian, too much like his old namesake, is laser focused on whatever mission he's on. Which is great! But sometimes uh, performs to the letter of the contract instead of fulfilling the spirit of the obligation. Like, uh, oh, go get this thing. Gets it. Uh, Or, like, yeah, go get this thing and then deliver it to person. He gets it. He doesn't, like... Something happens. uh, They're... Yeah, just, like, he's not good at... Thinking outside of the box and, like, looking... Reading between the lines. Loreline is capable, but she gets easily distracted and sometimes would rather be right in an argument than actually doing whatever needs to be done. I oh, like yeah, these characters both already. Of you guys are just so good. Exactly. Both, of you guys, both of you guys are done so good today. God damn. You've had a really <laughs> I good have... streak. I had to get I had to catch up at some point. Yeah, huh? yeah, you have to kick me down to the bottom. <laughs> uh so the movie starts out with the same intro. I liked the I also liked the opening. Uh and the and then the transition to Mule. I I thought the transition on Mule was just a little bit too long, but I wouldn't change that. I actually think it's good. Now that I've seen the full thing. Uh, So Valerian wakes up. He and Loreline are talking. And instead of lamenting that she won't marry him. Again, annoying Hector. Uh. He's he's complaining that he's never had a really serious relationship. And Loreline reminds him uh, he's got a bit of a rap sheet of being a player. And women rightly don't trust him. And that's his thing. It's like, why won't women date me? And she's like... This is so you made answer. him a nice guy? And then when she's gone. A, a <laughs> little? Nice guy? The, I think the nice guy implication is that you don't get... You you have not had a relationship. He has had, like, flings, but he's never had, like, a serious relationship. Like, at mm, first it okay. was, like, cool, so li- yeah, bit, I am yeah. doing a sex... A, a little bit. He was like he was having this. He was having a sex with many women, and then as soon as his reputation got out there, it just put. <laughs> and now he doesn't know why. When he was ready to like have a serious He's relationship, like, I'm ready to settle down, and then what women the were like, "No, nah, bro." <laughs> He's like, "No, no, please <laughs> settle over there. Settle on by yourself. Yeah, shit. settle oh, no. mosey on somewhere else, please." Uh. And then, like, later on in the movie, once again, when Loreline is off doing something else, that's when he can have a romance with Bubble, because they had way better natural chemistry. He was already inside her anyway, so... (laughs) Well, now... Bubble pegs him. Confirmed. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think how I would change it, first of all, um, I would put Big Market in the city... I, I, okay, I'm glad I was the one who thought. Why did they make it? It should just the city. all be in yeah. the city. The city is really cool, and you don't see it. There's the a thousand part. planets. Yeah, just have one that can connect to the fifth dimension or whatever. Or it's just like fine. A, like a negative blank space, like you put on the astronaut suit, and everyone's like, "What the?" Or like you're, the audience is thinking, "Like what the hell? Why are why are people just like in this crack in the spaceship?" And that's big market. There's a fifth dimension right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, basically, instead of just some mysterious war destroying Mule, what happened was, and I'm, I'm taking a little bit of artistic, well, I guess that's the whole point of the podcast, I've taken artistic license. Um, the general is a lot older than he looks, so when Alpha pushed off to become its own place, it found what it was looking for, like the perfect conditions for its space station, but there was one itty 
bitty six million population problem. Mm. There was a planet in the way, so they just kind of like, according to the lore, they just like, I don't know, maybe they moved it over. Maybe it's like, oh, it was uninhabited, so we just like, you know, I don't know. For some, like, Mule was there, and now it is not, and the history books don't seem to care why. Okay. I think you can guess why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, make it more like, uh, in the third Thor movie where it's like the after effects of colonialism like that, but like a little bit more spacey. Yeah. And then the, uh, Balan Bathor arc, I guess I would, uh, I would switch it up. So instead of having them be as hostile as they are, uh, it's, it's just a mess. I'm going to try and tidy it up, but. When they take Loreline, it's not, oh shit, I can't go in there because they're super hostile. It's, oh, I can go in there all I want. But they, like, I don't know, maybe they tunnel like ants or like hamsters where, like, there's no way in hell. If I don't know where I'm going, if I don't have a guide, I will never get into, as Hector mentioned earlier, a black market where they happen to be keeping Loreline because they heard about the mule converter. Where did they hear about the mule converter, you might be thinking. I'm so glad I predicted you saying that because uh, John Badman told them. (laughs) He's in the movie more. He was fun. Okay. And that's the reason that uh, Valerian goes to find the shapeshifter because the shapeshifter can make him look like John Badman and they take John Badman down there, quote unquote, the, 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 the aliens. And then it's like, what? This is obviously a fake. And then fight ensues. Okay, I'm digging it. Also, Bubble Lips, because fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I don't get why she died. Uh, I guess it was just like, oh, we don't want to deal with her being an illegal immigrant. That's uncomfortable. Okay, we're just going to kill her. Well, I think it was like to avoid Love Triangle, because it seemed like... They knew. <laughs> they knew. Because uh, Bubble, like, she kind of, like, she and what's Valerian got along, and like, oh, would there be a worry? Like, they had Bubble really supportive of their relationship for that reason, but they don't, they, no chances, you know? I guess. I don't know. But yeah, uh, that's all I can think of unless I missed something and someone would want to remind me. No, that's really good. I like that a lot, yeah. I like how we had different ways to interpret Valyrian and Laureline. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I think Valerian would pull the uh, kiss on the lips. You're the best sister ever, just to <laughs> with her. That <laughs> oh, that joke! <laughs> uh, I've been tempted to do that with Ruthie, where I'll kiss her on the lips, like you're the best sister ever. But I don't. She would. I would smack him. No, you would. Because. <laughs> so. See. <clears throat> what are we gonna rate this film? C minus. Hey, similar. D plus. So it grades. Woo. All right. Yeah. That was a quick rating. Next time. Yeah. Yeah. Northman. Hey, what if any, anyone been listening? Everyone should go anything? watch the Northman. It's really good. What do you think? Also, the Valkyrie is not wearing braces. Okay. She's not wearing braces. Uh, oh, good. Th- it's just that in some excavations they found like, like people braces. with like notches on their teeth that go hor- horizontally. You know? And I think, yeah. Oh, that's what you meant. No, I, no. I thought I misheard, yeah, like, they, what? They, did they the actors have braces and they didn't make her remove it? it? But that no. Looks like braces okay. They found notches on people's teeth in like scandinavia and they believe that they filled in those notches with some kind of metal or something yeah so the valkyrie has that <clears throat> and that's it pretty like sick ow but yeah everything else in that movie really cool. good Interesting. Um, yeah it's in my, okay i love the lighthouse it's like top five of mine so it's not eggers best and I honestly think it's his weakest of his three films, but it's still really good. I still really enjoy it because it still has Eggers hmm. stuff. It's just much more uh, 
much more for general uh, yeah it, it it's definitely more cleaned up made more for general audiences but it still has that eggers stuff that eggers is known for with like the high language kind of talking and all that and the monologues or should it have been entirely spoken in uh old norse <clears throat> i would love a cut of that that should not have been the theatrical release but I would have loved a cut of that. Okay. I want a I want a cu- cut of Eggers' original vision of the film because uh, since this isn't a twenty four, he like made the film, made a cut of it, showed it to the studio, and the studio was like, "Ah, uh, make it make it less weird." So he had <laughs> to make it less weird. Oof. <laughs> but. And, but he also said that like he didn't have that much like extra footage because he, he filmed exactly what he wanted. So he just like recut it a little bit, cut out some things, and then the, the uh, he he said it didn't change it much, and the second time the studio was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, an old Norse version of it would have been cool. And the weirder Eggers version would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, moving. Ruthie? Uh, Hector and I watched this little ditty called The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Uh, it has a an up-and-coming actor. Maybe you've heard of him. Uh, Nick Pl- Cage playing himself. I thought you were going to make a joke and say Pedro Pascal. <laughs> is, it, is it Nick Cage playing himself? Or is it Nicolas yes. Cage playing Nick Cage? It's... Yes. Yeah, both. it's kind of both. We're not going to spoil anything, so, so, but it's... Because I, I, I'm under the impression that Nicolas Cage is playing a person called Nick Cage that is almost Nicolas Cage, but not exactly Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I, I, we don't want to spoil it. You'll see. Okay. universe Nick Cage. That's the best ish, I can describe ish. it. You'll see. Yeah. It, okay. It's pretty. It's it's a pretty good movie. It's, um, okay. <laughs> I had a really great time with it. Yeah. It's, Ruth, it's, Ruthie it's, also it's saw everything movie. everywhere all at once. Yes. I caught her up. It's, so it's like good. really excited. Yeah, it's really it's good. so good. It's so good. God, did I have something? You know, yeah, that's a problem. You mean living together? We we don't have a lot of like separate new things. Yeah. Uh, Ruthie introduced me to an anime called Princess Tutu. It's uh, I've heard of it. <laughs> it's... wait, because I told you about it. I don't know. I don't think so. I was the oh, one maybe. who told you about it. Maybe, maybe. It's uh-huh. pretty good. It's really interesting. I was talking to a friend about it. It, I guess the basic summary is it's a world where fairy tales and like storybook fairy tales ex- start to exist in the real world and everyone just kind of like accepts so, like, Wolf, it. Wolf Among Us? No, 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 not uh, like it's that. Not, it's not the whole world. It's just this one little this... town. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So like uh, the main character is originally a duck and then uh a dead author comes to her in the dead of night and says, oh, that boy that you have a crush on, he's a prince. Will you save the prince who shattered his heart? And she's like, yeah, I would do anything to save him and restore his heart. Just to see him smile, that would be enough for me. And he's like, great, you're now Princess Tutu. Also, if you confess your love, you'll turn into a speck of dust. Bye! And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> it's, the thing is, uh, like, Lamo. every episode increases, I'm, I'm not done yet, but, like, every episode increases, like, the um, new information at a pretty good rate. Mm. Although, I will be honest, I kind of, let, so far, I've been referring the first half to the second half. Because the second half is basically, like, season two, and I don't get why. Season <laughs> one ended perfectly, and then, I don't know. It's good. It's really good. And people are probably going to look at me like, wow, Hector, you're watching a Magic Girl anime. Shut the fuck up. It's good. There's some legitimately there's a, fun mm-hmm. storytelling involved, and I'm there's really... a magic girl anime that I know of that has the most realistic fighting. Are you talking about Mahoko Magica? I don't know. The one it's where just the a magic like... girl, and then there's like French and Englishman fighting, and it has very realistic <laughs> fighting. Huh. Huh. Yeah. And now I'll do the outro. Yes. Today's film was Valyrian and the City of a Thousand Planets, directed by Luke Benson. The original graphic novel was written by Pierre Christine and Jean-Claude Maziris. Damn. 
and the screenplay was written by Luke Benson. The cinematographer was Thierry Arbogast. Go show some love to their various social media accounts. They made a movie, which is more than we can say here. <laughs> Nailed it. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Give Don't forget to give us uh, follow our social media and give us uh, five stars and comments. Show show this podcast to your mom. Yeah, and show it to your mother. Know. Yeah. Don't listen to it yourself. Just show it to her. Just show it to if, your mom. Yes. If, or your dad, if you don't have a mom, that's fine too. Or dads, or moms, or moms, <laughs> or aunts or uncles. Any or relative, really. Any relatives. Yes. Maybe a stranger on the street. Except, except, except that creepy uncle. No, creepy no. uncle's <laughs> forbidden. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> have a good day, everyone. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs>